I've got my Barbie hair on, my pink, my pink book collection, and we're gonna get right into it. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. Hi Barbie! My name is Alexis and welcome to the Tandem Collective, where you can find book recommendations, author interviews, and the latest news from Team Tandem. There is a huge blockbuster movie opening this Friday. Let me know if you're planning to go see the Barbie movie or if you've already seen it, what you thought of it. She's been all over social media for months now, and I thought it might be fun to pair up some iconic Barbies with book recommendations. For our first five and five, I'm going with possibly the most iconic Barbie of all time, and that would be Miss Malibu Barbie. Malibu Barbie was introduced first in the 1970s, and she's got the straight, long blonde hair and surfer vibe inspired by the California coast and specifically Malibu. Malibu. So the book I'm going to pair with Malibu Barbie is a bit on the nose, but there are a lot of reasons why this book fits really well. That would be Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Even just looking at the cover, you've got gorgeous tropical atmosphere, oceans, surfers, vibrant colors that really matches the vibes of Miss Malibu Barbie. It follows the four children of famous singer Mick Riva, who shows up in some of Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books in 1983 as they host their annual end of summer party in Malibu. Though the year is 1983, a lot of flashbacks are used to tell the story of these four siblings growing up, so you do get some 1970s vibes in there as well. Our second iconic Barbie today is Day to Night Barbie, also known as CEO Barbie. She first came out in the 1980s and was known for her versatile outfit. The first person I thought of was Miss Elle Woods from Legally Blonde. You may not know that Legally Blonde was actually a book shortly before it became a film in 2001. Now you may ask, why didn't I pair Legally Blonde with the Malibu Barbie? And I talked her out of buying this truly heinous Angora sweater. <laughs> Malibu Barbie lives. And that is because Elle Woods in Legally Blonde shows how versatile she is. People judge her by her looks, her blonde hair. <laughs> Her affinity for pink. But just like CEO Barbie, Elwood shows us that you can be both beautiful and have the brilliance and the ambition to work hard and follow your dreams. The other book I would recommend is the book Pink by Valerie Steele. This is a non-fiction book all about the history of the color pink, its use in fashion and its symbolism. In fact, the synopsis literally says that this is about the color formerly associated with Barbie acquiring a new identity. The next Barbie originally came out in the early 90s and was hugely popular. This was Totally Hair Barbie. Totally hot, totally cool, totally hair Barbie. She had hair that went all the way down to her ankles, different hair accessories that she came with. It was so much fun to play with one of these as a little kid. A brush, a brush, and brush, and brush my hair. Char from Team Tandem gave me a fantastic book recommendation to pair with Totally Hair Barbie, and that is Rapunzella, or Don't Touch My Hair, by Ella McLeod. This is a genre-bending YA that weaves together inner city life and a wildly dangerous fairy tale universe. You've got two sides to this story. You've got Rapunzella, who is imprisoned in an enchanted forest made of her own afro, and it's also the story of a girl living in our world as we know it, who spends most of her time in a hair salon and uses her imagination to see the different possibilities that hair can offer. Clearly the power of hair in this book pairs great with Totally Hair Barbie, but also the two different storylines and universes that are explored in this book is really similar to the Barbie movie in which she leaves Barbie land and goes into the real world. Barbie has had hundreds of jobs in her long, long career. So in 1965, Astronaut Barbie was released, which is really cool because this is four years before Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. And I think Astronaut Barbie pairs perfectly with the first book in a dystopian sci-fi series. It's called The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is a historical sci-fi that begins in 1952 when a huge meteorite 
falls to the earth and obliterates much of the east coast of the United States. The climate crisis that results from this meteorite naturally accelerates the efforts to colonize space. As a result, we have Elma York, who is a mathematician and is recruited to help with this effort because of her expertise. With so many skilled and experienced women pilots and scientists involved with the program, Elma begins to wonder why they can't go into space too. Elma challenges the conventions of this 1950s society and pursues her ambition in order to become a lady astronaut. This is the first book in Mary Robinette Kowal's Lady Astronaut series. I love how it's about the struggle for women to be recognized and given equal opportunities to men, pairing very well with astronaut Barbie coming out even four years before the first man landed on the moon. The final iconic Barbie that I chose came out in 1980 and she was the first black Barbie doll to be called Barbie. Now there is some debate over which doll was the first black Barbie, but the doll that came out in 1980 was also called Barbie. That was her name and I found that to be really significant in saying that the black girl isn't always just the best friend of the main character. The black girl can be her own main character. The book that I have paired with this Barbie is Black Girl Call Home. It's a collection of poetry by Jasmine Manns and this collection of her work covers feminism, queer identity, and race. I really recommend listening to the audiobook of this collection because Jasmine reads it herself and especially because Jasmine is a spoken word poet. It makes for a really immersive and different experience than just reading the words on a page. Unlike this 1980s Black Barbie, you can't put the Black experience into one box and that is what Jasmine talks about in this book. Ironically, right before I started filming this, I found that she has a poem called The Miseducation of a Barbie Doll. This poem talks about Nicki Minaj, who put out a Barbie song and a Barbie music video and challenges Nicki to not try and conflate her identity and her impressions of beauty and fitting a certain aesthetic into a stereotypical white person box. I'll put a link in the description of some of the videos of Jasmine performing that poem live. I'm going to bookend it there for today. That is our five and five books for iconic Barbies. I'd love to hear about what you think of these suggestions and if you have any recommendations for books that you would pair with an iconic Barbie. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the Tandem Collective for more bookish content from Team Tandem. You can sign up for our newsletter by following the link at the bottom of the video description and also find us on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.